The following is a presentation of the Mountaineer Sports Network. Points have been tough to come by for West Virginia University here at Lane Stadium in past years, but this afternoon, Major Harris brings a high-scoring West Virginia offense to Blacksburg. It's West Virginia against Virginia Tech along the Mountaineer Sports Network. Today's game is brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Key Centurion Bank Shares, building our communities together. Walker Machinery, your Caterpillar dealer. Your Mountaineer Chrysler Plymouth dealers, the competition knows it's the team to beat. U.S. Air, with flights to over 100 cities in North America. At U.S. Air, we welcome all of our passengers, one at a time. Greetings from a sold-out Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. I'm Tony Caridi along with John Garcia this afternoon, the sixth-rated West Virginia University Mountaineers against the one and three Hokies of Virginia Tech. Emotion is going to have to be a key in this football game for the WVU Mountaineers. John, after a big win over Pitt, the arch rival last week, how do you see them emotionally? There's no doubt that this is going to be a big game for the Hokies as far as enthusiasm. The key is going to be, can West Virginia come out and play with the levels of enthusiasm, concentration, and intensity that they had last week against Pitt? Now, now, in past games here at Lane Stadium under Don Neal in West Virginia is only averaging 11 points a game. It's been tough to score in past years, but West Virginia's got a high-powered offense this year, averaging 48 points a game. This is going to be a tough place to play. As you said, West Virginia has averaged 11 points a game, and the majority of those games have been less than 14. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned. The kickoff is coming up. West Virginia against the Hokies of Virginia. Well, we're all set to go from Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. The West Virginia Mountaineers have won the coin toss, but they have deferred until the second half. So it'll be Charlie Bauman. No, nope, make it Brad Carroll. He'll be kicking off this afternoon for WVU. Don Nealon looking on the West Virginia Mountaineers, sixth rated in the nation. Carroll's opening kick into the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Virginia Tech will start off first and 10 from their 20-yard line. Major Harris warming up along the West Virginia sideline. And the Virginia Tech Hokies. The 34th meeting between West Virginia and Virginia Tech. It all began back in 1912. A year ago, West Virginia won in Morgantown 28 to 16. Mountaineers have not won here at Lane Stadium since 1984. A whole new backfield in there for the Virginia Tech Hokies on first down and 10 because of injuries. They've had to go to this man, Ralph Brown, making his first start for Tech, crossing it over the 25-yard line. Brown's a sophomore from Hampton, Virginia, and he considers this game the biggest game in his Virginia Tech career because of the injury to John Jeffries. He's earned the start, and now he wants to go out and show head coach Frank Beamer that he deserves to play whether or not Jeffries is around. Seven-yard pickup. That'll bring up a second down and three. That's the, prop, that's the play we'll probably see the most today, Tony, is the toss sweep, secondly by the Belly Series. The quarterback is Will Fuhr. And again, it's Ralph Brown. Met there by Theron Ellis. He'll be shy of the first down. Ellis is coming off a tremendous game a week ago against the Pitt Panthers. And really, John, everyone played well against Pitt. Head coach Don Nealon gave 10 of his defensive starters the defensive champion award. That's the first time that's ever happened. Coach Kralavich told me it was the, uh, the most effort that uh, the whole total defense has played in his nine years since he's been here. Short yardage situation. Third down and one. The fullback is Malcolm Blacken, and he's the ball carrier, and he'll be short. A great surge by the Mountaineer defensive line, the left tackle, Mike Fox under there, along with outside linebacker Ronaldo Turnbull. Mountaineer fans, about 17,000 of them here at Lane Stadium this afternoon, share the unit on as they leave the field. Mike Fox is having a, a great year this year. He has two sacks and two tackles for losses. And that was a big stop right there. Tech has had problems with the punts. They've had three blocked in the last two games. No problem this time. Granis Bell from the West Virginia 35. A block there from Theron Ellis. And across the 45-yard line, down to the 37, it's Granis Bell. Penalty flag is down on the play. There's a look at the smallest member of the West Virginia University Mountaineers, Granis Bell at 5 feet 8, 150 pounds. 
He's having a good yard, a, a good year on those punt returns, averaging nine yards a return. Flipping is the call against the Mountaineers, and so West Virginia, instead of starting off in tremendous field territory over the 45-yard line, will have the ball marched down to the 26. So it'll be first down and 10 from the 26-yard line for the Mountaineers. Bell will line up as a receiver to the left side on first and 10, along with Kelvin Phillips to the far side. Craig Taylor and A.B. Brown are in the backfield. And Harris starts the game with a deflected pass. Horatio Maranza, the right tackle, had that ball bounce right off of his helmet as Harris came out firing. Virginia Tech plays a, a wide tackle six, and that's an eight-man front. And one of the keys that West Virginia is going to have to attack today is to loosen them up and throw the ball. And that's exactly what we saw Major do. Don Nealon said coming into this game that the team's run-to-pass ratio was getting off balance with too much run. And so he wants to throw it here. And he started just that way. Harris again looks to throw. It looks to be the same pattern. And he's got his man, Reggie Rember. Rember crosses over the 35 to the 37-yard line. And that'll be a first down for the Mountaineers. Roger Brown, the right cornerback out of Baltimore, Maryland, making the stop. Reggie Rember, West Virginia's leading receiver this season. 18 yards per grab. And an 11-yard pickup there for Rembert out of Okeechobee, Florida. And the Mountaineers have the first first down of the ball game. Twelve thirty-eight and counting, first quarter of play. The Mountaineers averaging 48 points per game. Spread out that Tech defense on first down and 10. Harris to Brown. A.B. Brown across the 40 down to the 42-yard line. On a five-yard pickup for Anthony Brown, the senior from Salem, New Jersey, right tackle Horatio Maranta, another New Jersey native out of Fort Dix, New Jersey, over to make the stop. A.B. with a tremendous run that broke open the pit game a week ago, 64 yards on a draw play that really crushed the spirit of the Pitt Panthers, John. He was named co-champion for his efforts last week against Pitt. Five-yard pickup, and it's second down and five. West Virginia's first offensive possession of the afternoon. Again, it's A.B. Brown and a big hole for Anthony Brown. Crossing over the 40-yard line into Tech territory. He'll be brought down at the 36. A tremendous job by the West Virginia offensive line. John Granby, the left cornerback, finally corralled Anthony Brown. But that's a first down for the Mountaineers. The keys, the keys of the wide tackle six is the play of those two men who covered the guards. This time, West Virginia guards John Stroy and John Kovach did a, a Bob Kovach did a great job. A.B. saw the cutback. Here's Harris on the option keep. Brings it back about a yard pick up to the 35, but a penalty flag is down. Maranta again over there to make the stop. Penalty will go against West Virginia. Illegal shift is the call. So motion in the backfield. Our referee this afternoon is C.C. Daly. A lot of times, using this wide tackle six, you'll see them, them shade and almost looks like a, a basic 50 front that you see a lot in college football. So what West Virginia is going to try to do is loosen up that strong safety and get him out of the force unit and have him play secondary coverage. So the Mountaineers will lose five on the play. The down will hold. It'll be first down and 15. Keith Wynn lining up far off to the left side, along with Granis Bell. Apparently no contact made. Now the flag comes down, and the play will be blown dead. Movement there. The two tackles for Virginia Tech, Scott Hill and Horacio Maranza, made contact. The question, were they drawn off? And the answer is yes. Two straight penalties against the Mountaineers and what was good field position has now become okay field position. They'll bring it all the way back to the 46 yard line. This is one thing that Coach Nealon told us that they have to eliminate. Don't come down here and make concentration errors. Harris to Jamie Lamont to the 35 yard line. So that gets them back to the initial line of scrimmage after Anthony Brown's run. 
John Granby making the stop on Lamont, who happens to be the roommate of Major Harris. So a roommate-to-roommate -roommate connection as West Virginia marches it back into Tech territory. Uh, again, just running the base option pass, trying to freeze up that secondary, and then come off with a pass to Jamie Lamont. Lamont staying into the ball game on second down and 10. Again, Keith Wynn lining up off the tight end position away from the line. He split out there, and again, flags fly. So it's becoming a sloppy game early on here at Lane Stadium. 10 minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And again, West Virginia called on illegal procedure. Coach Frank Beamer has been around the block a few times. He's coached under some, some great coaches, Jerry Claiborne, Mike Godfrey, Bobby Ross. Harris again looking to throw, wide open, it's Rembert. And Rembert apparently was looking to run with that football before he had the catch. Roger Brown, the right cornerback, was playing deep. And Rembert, as you saw there, was wide open. That'll bring up third down and 15 for West Virginia. Basic outcut pattern, and Rembert was well open. Early on, West Virginia has looked a little slack here with mental errors and also a drop ball there. Major Harris, two of four passing so far. Third down and 15 as Rembert comes in motion. And it's A.B. Brown. Brown has the first down over the 25. He may score. Brown knocked out at the eight and a half yard line. Roger Brown finally caught up with A.B. Brown. First down, West Virginia. The biggest play of the afternoon for the Mountaineers on third and 15. A super call by Coach Nealon and his staff. We've seen a lot of pass so far. They slip a draw in there. A.B. makes a great run to the outside and tries to get to the flag. So penalties or not, West Virginia marches on the Hokies in their first offensive possession. A.B. Brown now with 58 yards on just three carries. It'll be first and goal from the eight. And Craig Taylor's the ball carrier. He'll walk it in. Touchdown, West Virginia, 9.49 to go here in the first quarter of play. This is a belly by Craig. He makes a good run to the inside. Just a, a wide hole. Heck, you could drive a Mack truck through there. This is one thing we talked about. West Virginia has so much talent, and those mistakes don't hurt him as bad as Virginia Tech. Charlie Bauman looking for his 61st consecutive point after. And he'll have to wait as the officials call time. And yes, there is cause to cheer early in this ball game if you're a West Virginia cheerleader or a fan. The Mountaineers lead it. Six to nothing. Bauman looking for his 61st straight point after. And it is no good. No good wide to the left. Charlie Bauman had 60 straight going into that kick, and he boots it off wide to the left. West Virginia leading it 6 to nothing. 9.49 to go, first quarter of play. This copyrighted broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by West Virginia University through its Mountaineer Sports Network solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Mountaineer Sports Network is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Mountaineer Sports Network and references to products by the announcers are paid commercial messages. Well, West Virginia committed four penalties, totaling 30 yards in their first offensive possession, but it didn't seem to bother them as they march down and score it on an eight-yard run by Craig Taylor. West Virginia leads it six to nothing. Not only the four penalties, Tony, but also a drop pass and a missed, a missed extra point on that drive, and we still came out of it with six points. We're very fortunate. Brad Carroll will handle the kicking chores again for West Virginia in place of Charlie Bauman. Bill Bryan and Marcus Michael are back deep for Tech, and this one will be out of bounds, and that'll be the fifth West Virginia penalty of the game. Carroll will have to set it back five more yards and start again. Take a look there. West Virginia marching 74 yards in eight plays, three minutes and 15 seconds, and really the big, the big stat and the big key that stands out in that drive, John, is the fact that West Virginia was penalized four times. 
That's right. The, the Hokies have a very tough schedule this year. They played six, they're going to play six teams that went to bowl games last year. Syracuse, Clemson, West Virginia, South Carolina, FSU, and Virginia. They've got their work cut out for them. Dave McMichael, West Virginia's offensive line coach, down with his troops as Carroll will line it up again. Again, he kicks it to the left side. He gets off a good boot. Bryant will try it from one yard deep. Over the 20, he is met there by Charlie Fedorko out of Berwick, Pennsylvania. And Bryant brings the ball up to the 21-yard line. Charlie's having a great year on the specialty teams this year. He was named co-hustler versus the Maryland and Pitt game. Take a look at the ball carrier and watch the hit here by Fedorko. Not bad for a reserve wide receiver. Will Fuhrer will start things off for the Hokies, their second possession. They were held to three downs and out on their first. Fuhrer looking to pass for the first time this afternoon. Dal Jackson in pursuit. Intended there for the tight end, Brian McCall. And it was behind him. That'll bring up second down and 10. Fuhrer is still in the early learning systems of Division I college football. And coaches feel along the Virginia Tech side that he may be pressuring himself a little bit too much. He's a great natural talent, but you just can't go out there in your first uh, couple of games, John, and uh, take control and do exactly what you want to do. There's a lot of learning to be done, and West Virginia fans found that to be true a year ago when Major Harris was brought into the system. Second down and 10, and the quick pitch goes to Ralph Brown. Brown ahead to the 25-yard line, Dale Jackson. Stuck the arm out there and tripped up Ralph Brown. Sophomore out of Hampton, Virginia. That's their number one play again, Tony, the toss sweep. Secondly, we'll see the counter and then the draw play. Coach Robinson told me last night that there's a lot of similarities between the Virginia Tech offense and Pitt's offense. Maybe that's because Coach Beamer coached with Mike Godfrey. Third down and six. From the Hokie 25-yard line. Fjord. Intended again over there for the tight end. Brian McCall, Darrell Whitmore on the defensive coverage. The Hokie fans looking for an interference penalty, but no flag is down. And the Mountaineer defense holds it again, John. Darrell makes a, a great pet play here, coming up over the top, keeping away a pretty controversial car here, here, here by the Virginia Tech fans. Brennis Bell is back deep. Kelly Fitzgerald, the kicker, and Whitmore almost got a hand on that one. Grannis Bell from the 32-yard line. Bell to the 40. Darwin Herdman making the stop just shy of the 40-yard line. So West Virginia, again, will have good field position. Fitzgerald's punt, a 41-yarder. Grannis is really something special back there. He kind of reminds you of... Uh, Number 82 of the Houston Oilers, Willie Drury. He used to play for the Mountaineers. He was named co-hustler versus the Bowling Green game. So the Mountaineer offense, one for one in scoring so far this afternoon as Major Harris will go back to work. Four penalties in their first possession. Harris on the option freeze, wide open, it's Bell. Bell with one man to beat, can't do it. Scott Rice coming over and Bell is down at the 29-yard line. Boy, I'll tell you what, John, you cannot get more wide open than Granis Bell was there. That's right, Tony. That's the 800-900 option series where they come down the line and freeze that secondary. When you only have three secondary, three secondary people back there, we're going to see a lot of balls thrown today. So the Mountaineers again into tech territory. 8.21 to go, first quarter of play. And again, the flags come flying. Dead, dead ball foul, illegal procedure on the offense. Well, I'll tell you what, this is very interesting. This is the third illegal procedure call against the Mountaineers. Apparently, the officials are calling something a lot more closely than past officials have been because West Virginia has not been plagued at all by this type of a penalty through their first four games. And it, it surely can't be the noise, Tony, because it's not that loud in the stadium. Drops them back five yards, so again, first down and long for West Virginia. 
and it's Craig Taylor. Over the 30-yard line, down to the 29. Taylor scored West Virginia's first touchdown on an eight-yard run. Craig's having a good year. He's averaging 5.8 yards a carry. He had a long 25-yard run against Maryland. Taylor has not lost a yard on a carry all season. That carries over from last year where he carried the ball over 70 times and was never held to a loss. Four-yard pickup, second down and 11. Jamie Lamont in motion. Here come the Tech linebackers. And that ball is picked off. Intercepted there by John Granby, the left quarterback. So Major Harris intercepted for the fourth time this season. West Virginia six, Tech nothing, 7-18 to go, first quarter of play. Well, Don Nealon's club leads it six to nothing, but no, coach, no doubt the coach has some concern there. His club's been whistled for five penalties, and Major Harris has just thrown an interception. Virginia Tech has been shut down in their first two possessions. Ralph Brown is shut down there. Number 98 for the WVU Mountaineers coming over to make the stop. That's Jimmy Gray out of West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. Jimmy Gray, the, the middle car, just made a great, a great move. That's called a skin move where he runs right around the center. Hey, this is a big guy. He benches 425 pounds. So they catch Brown for a one-yard loss, and it's second down and 11. You're looking to put it up in the air. His tight end, Brian McCall, had his man beat, which was Robert Pickett, but the ball was overthrown. So they've gone three times to McCall, and he's 0 for 3 this afternoon. That's the same stat Fiora has, 0 for 3 passing. That'll bring up third down and 11. Fiora was redshirted his freshman year when he suffered a hand injury in the weight room. And then this past spring, he had a separated shoulder and had surgery again. He's a little bit in inexperienced, and he has some itchy feet. And we'll see him make some fresh mistakes today. He had four interceptions a week ago at Syracuse, has six for the season. Third down and 11. Hazel Proctor in for the Mountaineers. First time Fuhrer has looked to his right. And coming over to make the stop, Hazel Proctor, the designated pass rusher in on that third and long series for West Virginia, does his job. The junior from Miami, Florida. Just a a great job. Fuhrer's going to have a very tough time coming into his right because he's a southpaw. You notice how he has to square his shoulders all the way across. That's awful difficult for a quarterback to do. A great play by Proctor. It's Gerald on for his third punt. Bell takes it at the 43 in Tech territory. Knocked out of bounds at the 29-yard line. You cannot ask for better field position. West Virginia's defense holds off the Tech offense, and the Mountaineers will start first and 10 from the Hokie 29 with 5.58 to go here in the first quarter. Well, the Mountaineers will try it for the third time this afternoon. 5.58 to go, first quarter of play. WVU leads it 6 to nothing. A.B. Brown, the ball carrier. Hit there by left tackle Scott Hill. Junior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. A.B. had a tremendous afternoon against Virginia Tech a season ago, rushing for over 100 yards. And he's looking for a big game here this afternoon, and he's off to a good one. Picks up two there. He's got 55 yards on four carries. Harris on the option. Finds a seam. And Major down to the 22-yard line. Horacio Maranta, the right tackle, making the stop. Fans, don't forget Mountaineer Sports Night next Friday evening on MSN Television. Host Woody O'Hara will look at today's highlights, talk with head coach Don Nealon, and preview the East Carolina game. Mountaineer Sports Night loaded with features and information, giving fans a behind-the-scenes look at West Virginia football. Consult your local listings for the time in your area. So it's a third down and three situation for West Virginia following the carry by Harris. With the first down, he may have the TD. Coming over was Scott Rice, and he did a good job to box in Major Harris, who was looking to bring it down that near sideline. First down, West Virginia. Major, Major is really something special. Coming out on a reverse option, 
he finds a seam, and that's one thing that he's great at. It doesn't look like he can, he can get through there, and all of a sudden he slips right through. A great job. A.B. really had a nice block on the corner. First down and goal for the Mountaineers from the six-yard line. Brown, the ball carrier, slicing through, and he's down to the three. Left tackle, Scott Hill, over to make the stop. There you see him, number 66, down on his back. Hill was the leading tackler on the Tech team a year ago with, believe it or not, 177 stops. Last year, Hill was named the Defensive Player of the Year by the Roanoke Times, and they really think this guy's a big timer. Second and goal from the three. Brown again gets the call, and he'll be held short of that goal line, down to the one-yard line. Randy Cockrell, the right side linebacker, closed it up quickly, and Brown was put down at the one. A.B. with six carries, 65 yards so far here in the first quarter of play. This is where that strength program comes in handy, Tony. Third and goal. Taylor's the fullback, Tyler in motion. Harris will be held short of that goal line, bringing up a fourth down and goal. Good job there by the Tech defensive unit. Jock Jones over to lead the charge. Harris had thoughts of optioning that football, but it closed up quickly. Tech did a tremendous job defending the play. Charlie Bauman will come on to try a chip shot field goal. From the nine, make it a 19-yard attempt. It is good, and West Virginia takes a 9 to nothing lead with three minutes to go here in the first quarter of play. John, it's not often that uh, the Mountaineers have been held on a first down and goal situation away from scoring a touchdown. Good job there by the Tech defenders to give up just a field goal. That's right. Obviously, they were very well coached. They had every phase of the option covered. They contained Major Harris. They had the pitch covered. And, and the whole that tackle was made by the whole right side of the defensive line. Don Nealon has come to Blacksburg four times. He is two for two against the Hokies. This is his fifth appearance. Overall, he's six and two as West Virginia's head coach against Tech. There's Mike Wallace in charge of West Virginia University's special teams. I asked Coach Wallace this week about his kickoff coverage, and he said that his guys are finally just starting to settle in, and, and kickoff coverage is very lane-oriented. Or Everybody has to stay in their lanes, and if there's one seam, there could be a big play busted. So he said they're finally starting to settle into that. Myron Richardson and Marcus Michael are back deep. The Charlie Bauman field goal, culmination of a five-play drive, traveling 27 yards with 241, taken off the clock. There's exactly three minutes to go here in the first quarter of play, and West Virginia leads it 9 to nothing. One thing you'll notice, now West Virginia tees the ball up from the far right hash. They've gone in the middle and the right to try to change that up a little bit. Carroll's boot, a low line drive, and this one will be a touchback. So he does his job as he splits it between Marcus Michael and Myron Richardson, and the Hokies will have the ball first and 10 from the 20-yard line. I think that was one of the reasons why that uh, Coach Nealon deferred that kickoff. There is a, 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 nice, a nice strong wind blowing in that direction. Fans, tickets remain on sale for all upcoming West Virginia home games except Penn State. Boston College up next Saturday, October the 22nd at Mount Field. You can charge tickets by calling 1-800-352-2512. Here come the Hokies. Will Fuhrer on the option keep. Picks up a yard to Ron Ellis from his inside linebacker stop. Had the play read beautifully. Fuhrer is still looking for his first completion of the afternoon. He's 0 for 3. Myron Richardson lines up as a receiver to the left side, and the quick toss goes to Ralph Brown. Lonnie Blockman is there to start it off, and L. Boyd Mays from his cornerback position there to finish it off as Brown is stopped for a loss for the second time this afternoon. 
Again. trying to turn it up, but John, I think we're seeing good defensive pressure by West Virginia. They're coming off the ball very well. Again, Virginia Tech's favorite play, the toss sweep. The thing that happened there, Lonnie got way up the field and forced him to go deep. The pursuit was able to come in. A super job by Lonnie Brock. Third and 12. Tech is 0 for 3 on third down conversions this afternoon. Girl with the straight drop. And the ball intended there for Ralph Brown batted away by Basil Proctor. So Proctor, for the second series in a row, stops the Hokie attack on third down. And Kelly Fitzgerald will be brought on to punt the ball once again. Again, a, a play action pass. And it was a great job by Proctor filling in and coming up and breaking that play. One thing we'll notice is that uh, Coach Shaw substitute Massley on, on third down play. So he tries to get the best people into the game. A very poor punt by Fitzgerald will roll dead at the 41 and a half yard line. So Fitzgerald is struggling, had a good punt his first attempt, followed that with a 32 yarder in his last kick, and that one goes for just 24 yards. And so again, West Virginia begins a possession inside Tech territory. One minute and 37 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. An absolutely beautiful day in Blacksburg, Virginia, where a sellout crowd is on hand to watch the 34th meeting between West Virginia and the Tech Hokies. Andre Johnson gives that ball over to Reggie Rembert, and Tech has the play read very well. Rembert stopped for a loss back at the 46-yard line. Jock Jones, junior out of Ashland, Virginia, had seen that play once before. West Virginia has run the reverse every game this season, and Tech was waiting for it there. That's right. Reggie has, has run that same play six times for a total of 74 yards, and there's no doubt these kids were well coached and waiting for it. Aaron Evans is the fullback for the Mountaineers. Andre Johnson is the tailback. The option freeze. Harris throwing deep for Grannis Bell. Over the head. Bell looking for a flag. There isn't one. John Gramby, the cornerback, was on the coverage. 52 seconds remaining here in the first quarter of play as you take another look at Grannis Bell going up against John Granby. No reason to ooh and ah there by the fans. It was clean all the way. Third down and 15 for the Mountaineers. From your perspective, right, Tony? <laughs> oh, it looked clean. Yeah. Again, it's the option freeze by Harris. Wide open, Rembert at the 15. Down to the nine-yard line, the eight-yard line for Reggie Rember. John Granby, the left cornerback, is being tested here by the Mountaineers. They tried it against Bell, and then they went to Rembert, and Granby that time could not make the play as Rembert is wide open for a West Virginia first down. Again, West Virginia frees that, that defensive back with that option series. Reggie just had a great move and broke it to the outside and a great catch. He's leading West Virginia in pass receiving with 180, 180 yards. First and goal from the seven. And the ball carrier, Andre Johnson, ahead to the six. Don Stokes, the left side linebacker, made the stop on Andre Johnson. Andre tied for the team lead in touchdowns with five, along with A.B. Brown. He's also having a good year carrying the ball with 4.2 yards of carry. Well, the Mountaineers had a first and goal their last possession and had to settle for a field goal. Same situation here as the final seconds tick off the first quarter clock, and it's over. West Virginia leads it 9 to nothing as we head to the second quarter of play. The Mountaineers will start off the second quarter of play here at Blacksburg, second down and goal from the six-yard line. The Mountaineers just destroying statistics Tech in the first quarter of play. 170 yards total offense for West Virginia, just five for Virginia Tech. Adrian Mawson has the tight end for West Virginia. Johnson, the ball carrier, slipping down to the five. Cornerback Sean Lucas out of Abingdon, Virginia, makes the stop on Johnson. That'll bring up third down and goal. 
West Virginia with that whole backup line in there right now. Every third series, they rotate the whole offensive line. Evans and Johnson in the backfield. The timing pattern to Rember. Incomplete as a penalty flag goes down. The Mountaineers used that timing pattern in their first game against Bowling Green, and it worked. Penalty will go against West Virginia. And that'll cost them the down on the penalty. So again, Tech stops a touchdown attempt by West Virginia on a first and goal situation, and Charlie Bauman will be called on for a field goal. Charlie having a great year so far, six for seven. 86%. Coach Nealon says he's like money in the bank. He'll be kicking this one into the win. A 37-yard attempt for Charlie Bauman, the senior from Erie, Pennsylvania. Chuck Levinus is the holder. It's long enough, and it is good. West Virginia takes a 12 to nothing lead with 14 minutes and 20 seconds to go here in the second quarter of play. Very uncharacteristic, John, of the West Virginia offense to sputter once it gets inside the opposing team's 10-yard line. They've had great success all season, but Tech has held West Virginia on two possessions once they've gained a first down and goal situation. This is what Coach Nealon talked about. Don't come down here and make mental mistakes. There's no doubt that West Virginia has talent, but let's concentrate and have fun and play some ball. Mountaineer marching band, the pride of West Virginia. In full force here. Located in the end zone underneath the scoreboard at Lane Stadium. Charlie Bonneman just having a great year. In fact, last night in the hotel, he said, uh, hi, Mr. Garcia. And I said, huh, please, Charlie, don't call me Mr. Garcia. That's some old man who lives in Pittsburgh. I'm not that old. <laughs> so Bauman has seven points for West Virginia, seven of their 12. And he continues to lead the team in scoring. He's up there nationally, John, in point scoring. Top 10 scorers in the nation coming into the game, averaging over 10 points a game. West Virginia travels 21 yards in seven plays as Bauman kicks a 37-yard field goal. His first boot was a 29-yarder. That gave West Virginia a nine to nothing lead. The president of Virginia Tech, Dr. James McComas, is a West Virginia native, Tony, born in Pritchard, West Virginia. A West Virginia graduate, 1951. A lot of relationships between the two states, of course, because of the proximity. This is Marcus Michael from the four-yard line, and Charlie Fedorko tracks him down again. Shy of the 20 to the 19-yard line, Charlie Fedorko. Reserve wide receiver for West Virginia makes his second big hit on the kickoff return in the ball game. Charlie just having a great year on the specialty teams from Berwick, Pennsylvania. Played for Coach Curry up there. Tremendous program, Berwick, Pennsylvania. He was a teammate with West Virginia safety Bo Orlando, and in Bo's senior year, they won the high school national championship voted by USA Today. Gore drops the ball, but has the presence of mind to pick it up, and he fires his first completion of the afternoon. Nick Cullen makes the catch at the 28-yard line. Well, that's good presence of mind for a freshman quarterback to drop the ball, pick it back up, and he fires it to Cullen. Eight-yard pickup, and that'll be a second down and two. Cullen is a good possession receiver, runs good routes, has average speed of 4'7", but he can catch the football. Quick toss going to Ralph Brown, bobbles it, and Bo Orlando, along with Chris Herring and Mike Fox, there to make the stop. Brown has had some problems trying to turn the corner here early on. He's been caught in the backfield twice for losses. He's a big guy, a lot bigger than most running backs. He stands six feet three and weighs 225 pounds. So to compare him to someone you might be more familiar with, he's kind of like an Eric Dickerson type, 6'3", 225, and likes to run up. This past winter, his squat went from 390 to 540. So he's made a lot of improvements on his strength. Third and one. The fullback, Blacken. And he looks to be held short of that first down marker. 
That was Phil Bryant, the ball carrier. And the Mountaineer defense does it. They hold off the Hokies on a third down and one. A great surge there by the Mountaineers. Number 73, Scott Summons, just having a great year. He's a 440-pound bench presser. He was named defensive co-champion versus Maryland. And Coach uh, Roberts told me last night this is one of the keys why his defensive line is having such a great year. Fitzgerald comes back with a good boot after a 24-yarder, and the Tech Hokies have Granis Bell trapped in. Tech hit. Spot the ball down there, excuse me, John, at the 28-yard line. 46-yard punt. West Virginia will have the ball when we return. 12.25 to go. Major Harris looking to build upon a Mountaineer 12 to nothing lead. And the toss goes to A.B. Brown. Brown ahead to the 35-yard line. Seven-yard pickup for A.B. Brown, brought down by outside linebacker Jock Jones. West Virginia is just so darn deep with talented players. Now they have their first team back in there with A.B. and that starting, starting offensive line. And last series, they had the backups in there. A.B. Brown off to a tremendous afternoon, nearing the 100 mark, and we've still got 11 minutes and 50 seconds to play here in the second quarter. Harris with plenty of time. Jamie Lamont for the reception. First down, West Virginia. Spot the ball up to the 43-yard line, so Lamont has a pair of receptions this afternoon. Senior from Washington, Pennsylvania, came to the West Virginia program two years back out of Dodge City Community College in Kansas. Played his first year in, redshirted last year, and is back for his senior season. And as mentioned earlier, he's the roommate of Major Harris, so you've got to think during the week, they say, I promise you, get open and I'll get it to you. First down play for the Mountaineers, and it's A.B. Brown. Out ahead to the 49-yard line as West Virginia looks to march it into Tech territory. I'll promise you or I'll pay you. <laughs> Don Stokes, junior linebacker from Hopewell, Virginia, made the last stop on Brown. Offensive coordinator Bob Shaw down on the field going over schemes with his unit. Defense for West Virginia has played very well here early. Major Harris, second down and five, reverses himself, and he's got his tight end, Keith Wynn. Wynn down to the 40, another first down for the Mountaineers. Lucas, left outside backer there to make the catch. This is a play action pass, and Major Harris has, has plenty of time. He sees Keith running the hook pattern, and Keith really not as utilized as he has, as the tight ends have been in the past, just because West Virginia hasn't been throwing the ball as much. That was Wynn's fourth reception of the season. From the Tech 40 yard line. Bumble on the play. And it looks as though Brown, no, he didn't get a hold of it. Coming up with the ball is Don Stokes. Linebacker out of Hopewell, Virginia, number 32, his arm raised there. Mountaineers commit their second turnover of the ball game. Harris was intercepted in the first quarter, and now the fumble by A.B. Brown with 10 minutes and 16 seconds to go. Here in the second quarter of play. Tech finally getting some decent field position where they could do something. LV flag comes down. Fjord has his man wide open. Myron Richardson down for the touchdown. But again, let's point out that the penalty flag is down. It will go against Virginia Tech. An illegal shift is the call. West Virginia had the same penalty called against them in the first quarter. And this one's really going to sting for the Hokies. An illegal shift on the offense. Man going in motion. Quarterback goes down. Man going in motion. Negates the touchdown pass from Fjord to Richardson. Fjord just unleashed that ball, and he couldn't really see what happened there, but Al Boyd apparently just got beat deep. Richardson 
Anderson with great speed. He's a 4-4-8-40. Five-yard penalty. It'll be first down and 15. Nick Cullen in motion. The draw play to Ralph Brown. Brown slowed there by Dale Jackson, breaking free as he brings it into West Virginia territory, down to the 41-yard line. So after getting knocked around, Ralph Brown breaks one free. Hokies have themselves a first down. What we talked about, their sec one of their second or third biggest plays is the draw play. They snuck one in, in there. Ralph made a great job getting to the perimeter and getting upfield. West Virginia has to get that intensity back that they had last week and all that enthusiasm and zip. It seems like we're a little bit flat. That was the first first down of the ball game for Tech. Comes with nine minutes and 58 seconds to go in the first half. Again, they go to Brown. Ahead for a couple of yards. It'll bring up a second down and eight. Brown has been looking for a big season. He started things off with a very good spring practice. Finished up the maroon and orange game in spring with 140 yards and was named the most valuable offensive player on that afternoon. He's had some nagging injuries throughout his career that, that had slowed him down a little bit. Fjord in trouble and he is brought down by Chris Parker, senior out of Whitehall, Pennsylvania, with the sack on Will Fjord. That'll bring up a third down and long. Fjord with a straight drop back pass. Tech has had a little bit of problems this year with their pass protection. Chris Parker, just a great job his second sack of the year, and he has five tackles for a loss, having a super year. He's on his way to gaining All-American status. Third down and long. West Virginia comes with a blitz on the corners. Intended there for Jeff Roberts, and over on the coverage, Morgantown's Willie Edwards. Despite the big return on the big run by Ralph Brown, Kelly Fitzgerald will again be called on to punt. Travis Bell standing at the 10-yard line. Fitzgerald has been erratic in his punting so far. Plenty of time. Gets off a high boomer that gets caught up in the wind. And the Mountaineers will have a touchback, first and 10 for West Virginia from the 20 yard line with eight minutes and 31 seconds to go here in the second quarter. West Virginia leads it 12 to nothing. Well, the Mountaineers have had to settle for field goals on their last two possessions after gaining a first down and goal. Let's see what they can do on this possession. Harris is in trouble, and the Hokies have got it. Ball popping loose, and West Virginia coughs it up. Second straight possession, they have fumbled the football. Al Chambly, sophomore out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, had the pressure on Major Harris, and the Major coughs the ball up. Virginia. Bobby Martin, excuse me there, John, the right side linebacker, came off that pile. He was down there as the Mountaineers have committed their third turnover. Chambly has been their big play man for the last couple years. He has great quickness. He's a 400-pound bench presser, and there he comes up with a big play again. Malcolm Black in the fullback. On the draw play is met there by Chris Herring. Junior out of Pueblo, Colorado. Just a super play on the draw play by Chris Herring. I mean, a linebacker cannot play that play any better than he did. It was a pass. They slipped the draw in there. He hung in there and nosed him up. Great job by Chris Herring. Two yard pickup, second down and eight. Again, they go to Blacken. And he closes it into the 11-yard line. Blacken's a senior from Beaverlet, Virginia. Had a really poor junior year. Finished up with just 22 yards on 18 carries. His career has gone up and down at Virginia Tech. Back in 1986, he was the starting tailback on the team that went to the Peach Bowl. Last year he struggled, and this year he's coming back. Had a good offseason. And looking to make a big contribution. 
Third down and two. Confusion in the backfield. Turnbull is after Fuhr. And Fuhr tosses the ball, intended it over there, on the far side for Jeff Roberts. There was no doubt there was a missed assignment on that play. It looked like the tailback went the wrong way. Mike Fox put on great pressure, forced Fuhrer to throw the ball out of bounds. So Chris Kinzer will come on for the field goal attempt. Spotted on the 18-yard line, so a 28-yard attempt for a senior place kicker, Chris Kinzer, a former All-American. And he rifles it through with seven minutes and five seconds to go here in the first half. The Hokies get on the scoreboard, West Virginia 12 and Virginia Tech 3. West Virginia defense did a great job on that play, holding the Virginia Tech offense to three points. That's considered a sudden change anytime that ball is given up in your field position. West Virginia did a great job there. Well, for all those Mountaineer fans watching on home team sports in the Capital Region, this bug's for you. West Virginia leads it 12 to three with seven minutes and five seconds to go. So Tech has definitely been outplayed so far in the game, John, but the scoreboard won't tell you that. That's because West Virginia has had to settle for field goals on two situations where they had gained a first down and goal. And that's basically because of costly mental mistakes. Penalties, drop passes, fumbles, that sort of thing. And I'm sure Coach Neal is going to have a little talk at halftime about some concentration. On air offense is high powered, averaging 48 points per game. In fact, in their last 12 straight games, they have averaged 40 points. Out here, kick unit comes on as we take a look at the tech scoring drive caused by the fumble. Four plays, from just eight yards, one minute and 18 seconds as Chris Kinzer gets the Virginia Tech Hokies on the board. Coach Beamer of Virginia Tech really just start, just getting started here under his second year. He's the first Virginia Tech alumni to be head coach in over 40 years. Eugene Napoleon is back deep as Kingsley kicks the ball off, and it's a tremendous kick, and West Virginia will not have a return. First and 10 for the Mountaineers from the 20-yard line as the defenders, Chris Bo Orlando and Robert Pickett, get together on the sideline to straighten some things out. Pickett's a big story for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Very questionable going into the season because he had a problem with his forehead swelling because of contact. And they were really worried as to whether he would be able to play this season, but they found the helmet that was just right, and he's been in there for the Mountaineers. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. The ball carrier is Craig Taylor. Picks up four yards on the play. Making the stop for the Hokies. That's a, Herdman. That's a very unusual head injury. Uh, John Spiker, one of the athletic trainers, told me that uh, he's only known of three of those type injuries. Brad Hunt and Pickett have been two of them here. Delvin Phillips coming in motion. And the quick toss goes to A.B. Brown. Brown slowed up there by Leslie Bailey, the junior out of Hampton, Virginia. They'll spot the ball at the 26-yard line, bringing up a third down and four. A.B. Brown comes into the ball game with 333 yards rushing, and so with over 70 this afternoon, he's already over the 400 mark for the season. On third and four, Harris looks to put it up. Throws across, and he's got the first down at the 39-yard line. West Virginia has the first down, the pass complete to Jamie Lamont. So Jamie has three receptions for the Mountaineers this afternoon, his biggest afternoon this season. Again, Major has plenty of time, but he uses, utilizes his talent and gets to the outside and sees the open man, Jamie Lamont, dragging across the middle. A great job by ja Jamie coming back to the quarterback on the scramble. A.B. Brown tries the middle. Picks up three yards on the play. 
Horatio Moranto. Junior out of Fort Hicks, Fort Dix, New Jersey, makes the stop. Moranta was one of two Tech defenders that had to sit last season out because of academic problems. The other was left outside linebacker Sean Lucas. So Moranta got the work done in the classroom, and he's back there, and he's a key member of that Virginia Tech defense. On the option, Brown looking for room. Lang comes down. Brown crosses over the 40-yard line. Will Goen made the stop on Brown. Don Nealon can't be happy with the penalties that have been called here this afternoon. There's a holding against his team. Don Nealon said coming in that he wants to throw the ball more this afternoon than he has been. They've been averaging just 15 pass attempts a game and Harris already has 12 here with 452 to go in the first half of play. So they're living up to their word. Second down and 20 for West Virginia. West Virginia's all-time winningest coach looking on from the sideline and Don Neely. Harris looking downfield. He's got Lamont. Jamie Lamont down at the 48-yard line, just shy of the first down marker. John Granby made the stop on Lamont, who's really becoming a factor in the game. That's his fourth catch. Again, the 800-900 pass series. Major Harris reversing out, coming back off the line, freezing that free safety, seeing Jamie drag across the middle. It seems like every week, West Virginia features a different wide receiver whether it's Grannis or, or Jamie. Double tight end formation on third down and one, and they've got A.B. Brown stopped. Bobby Martin leading the charge along with Horatio Morata and Darwin Hurtman. And the Mountaineers will be forced to punt for the first time this afternoon. Brown is stopped for a loss on the play on a third down and one. Just a great job by Bobby Martin, one of the linebackers, sneaking in there, making a big play. He had a big play against, he had a big game against West Virginia last year. Lance Carrion's punt into the win, a high spiral that gets caught up. Myron Richardson calls for the fair catch. And Tech will have the ball. First down and 10 from the 23-yard line with three minutes and 19 seconds to go here in the second quarter of play. West Virginia leads it 12 to 3. Well, there was a flag thrown on that punt by West Virginia. It will be a clip against Virginia Tech. And talk about a useless penalty as Myron Richardson called for the we fair had catch. A clip. It'll be a post scrimmage kick enforcement. Means we're penalized from the end of where the kick ended, and the red team will keep the ball. Bobby Martin, the linebacker who made that big play, is considered the most improved player this past, past spring. Last year against West Virginia, he had 11 tackles, one sack, a fumble recovery, and a cause fumble. He had a full day's work. Okies driving back to their 14-yard line on the penalty. Well, they're going to even make it farther than that. They respot the ball. And that'll bring it to the 11-yard line. Off goes to the fullback, Malcolm Blacken. Brings it ahead to the 15-yard line. Four-yard pickup as Scott Summits, nose guard for the Mountaineers, over to make the stop. Scott with a, a great job that time, had a runaround move, ran right around the center, came up with a big play. He has three sacks this year. He's doing a heck of a job. Under three minutes to go here in the second quarter of play.
Durr on the draw play to Ralph Brown. He's met there by Theron Ellis and Scott Summits. He'll be short of the first down marker by a couple of yards. Well, Brown now with 32 yards on eight carries. You're looking on third and two, and that ball is incomplete. Intended for Nick Cullen at the 30-yard line. Darrell Whitmore over on the defensive coverage for the Mountaineers. This is what the West Virginia defensive staff has said, that this quarterback will feature the passes in the flat and the curl patterns. He very seldom goes deep. What they want to do is get him out of that pocket and get him on the move to throw the ball. It's Darrell's punt, a good one, a high spiraler. Bell muffs the ball in West Virginia. will start off on the 28-yard line. First down and 10 with one minute and 56 seconds to go. A 53-yard boot by Kelly Fitzgerald. Well, the Mountaineer offense has been slowed here after a very productive first possession. They marched right down the field despite committing four penalties and scored on an eight-yard run by Craig Taylor. But since that point, they've had to settle for a couple of field goals, and they lead it 12 to 3. West Virginia's starting offensive line is in, intact. As John mentioned, they commonly make substitutions. Harris on the run. Major dragged out at the 36-yard line, gets caught up on the bench. Don Stokes made the hit. And the partisan Mountaineer crowd here looking for a late call. I don't know if that was a quarterback draw or not, Tony. Looked like Major Harris was dropping back the pass, and that thing just naturally opened it for him. And he had a good job getting to the sidelines, getting upfield. Just a little aggressive football there, that's all. The Major picks up eight yards, second down and two. Double receivers out to the left. Wide open, Darrell Mitchell. And Mitchell has the first down as the Mountaineers move into Tech territory. They'll spot the ball on the 37-yard line. John Granby, the left quarterback, could not stay up there with Darrell Mitchell, the sophomore from Point Pleasant, West Virginia. No huddle by the Mountaineers. 139 and counting here in the first half. Pressure on, and Jamie Lamont, the intended receiver, can't hold it, but the ball was right there for Lamont. Tech sent the quarterback along the right side of the defense, straight ahead on a blitz. Harris picked it up and fired the ball very nicely into Lamont, but he couldn't make the grab. Darrell Mitchell is going to be a name that West Virginia fans are going to hear in the future. He's an extremely talented youngster. Needs to work on a little bit more strength. He's been pressing about 345 pounds right now. Both these teams, Tony, are pretty darn proud of their weight program. There was a little article in their press guide, Virginia Tech's, about their weight program that three people bench press over 400 pounds. Looking at Al Johnson's program in West Virginia, over 34 people bench press over 400 pounds. That's a key point of this game as the game wears along. West Virginia with the greater amount of strength would be expected to wear down the Hokies. And if you take a look at West Virginia through their first four games, that has hold, held true. Their offense scoring more points as the game moves along. In fact, their biggest quarter offensively is the fourth quarter where they've scored 56 points through the first four games. Take a look at the passing yardage and uh, West Virginia with 162 through the air. The Mountaineers just dominating the game statistically, but the big stat really isn't that offset. 12 to three, West Virginia leads it with 133 to go here in the first half of play. Second down and 10, we'll be facing the Mountaineers. 
West Virginia was charged with that last timeout. And it's Craig Taylor. Taylor down to the 30-yard line. Randy Cockrell, the right side linebacker, making the stop. What the offense will do in situations like this, Tony, they'll, pro they'll call two plays in the huddle so the kids can line back up again and run it. Penalty flag is down on that play. Now we've got an unsportsmanlike conduct call against West Virginia. That'll be Mountaineer penalty number nine. So the Mountaineers on a march here as time winding down in the first half of play and they're hit with a 15-yard penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. Didn't pick it up there, but I believe it was words going on after the Taylor run. Harris with plenty of time goes for Mitchell and the ball is picked up at the 25-yard line. Sean Lucas on the interception. Virginia Tech, that's the second interception taken off of Major Harris this afternoon. Straight drop back pass, and it's just flat, flat out poor judgment by Major Harris. Lucas has Mitchell very well covered, throws the ball to him. I think if he would have thrown that ball more to the outside, he may have had a chance, but he threw it behind Mitchell, and Lucas was there to make the pick. Nick Cullen comes in motion. Yor letting it go deep. David Lockwood is back for the Mountaineers. Pushed there by Byron Richardson. And that'll bring up second down and ten. With one minute and one second to go here in the first half of play. That particular play, Byron Richardson had to quickly turn from pass receiver to pass defender as he saw the ball was thrown behind him. He had to make the play pushing Lockwood back so the interception wouldn't be caught. the draw play. West Virginia has it red. Chris Herring along with Bo Orlando. That'll bring up a third down situation. Third down and long. 48 seconds and counting here in the first half. Another great job by Chris Herring on the draw play with outside support from Bo Orlando. 35 seconds and counting. Third down and long. Your breaks free. It'll be close to the first down as he brings it over the 36-yard line. 24 seconds on the clock. And the officials will call time for a measurement. Got it. Just by the nose of that football with 24 seconds to go here in the first half of play. Virginia Tech has their second first down of the ball game. Clock begins to wind down. 15 seconds and counting. Gore looking for his tight end and he's got Brian McCall. And McCall have the ball spotted at the 47 yard line. First reception for Brian McCall. Junior out of Raynell, West Virginia, attended Greenbrier West High School. Virginia, Virginia Tech coaching staff doing a good job with, with the, while the clock's ticking down here, utilizing their timeouts and field position. And they do have the wind to their back. If they can get one more playoff and out of bounds, we can expect an outcut or something like that to get that clock stopped. Well, they've got 54 yards to travel in seven seconds as we take a look at Will Fjord, red-shirted freshman out of Bellevue, Washington, the state of Washington, attended Fork Union Military Academy and enjoyed 
enjoyed the state of Virginia so much that when his career was done at the prep school, he said, yeah, I think I will play at Virginia Tech. Coming off of shoulder surgery during spring practice, his dad is an orthopedic surgeon, so his dad flew in and operated on his son, who had a separated shoulder. So Fuhrer was unable to go through spring drills, and the coaching staff believes that really slowed him in his progress. Fuhrer firing deep, and he's got Ralph Brown incomplete. Did not get both feet in. Two seconds showing on the clock. Daryl Whitmore over on the coverage. That was another great call by the Virginia Tech staff. They had the right idea. Get that, get that clock down to two seconds. Well, he had the feet in. Apparently did not have control of the football. So two seconds remain here in the half. And Tech again will try to fire that ball deep. Now, Fjord has a tremendous throwing arm. He can put the ball 60 yards into the air and expect to see that here. Virginia Tech quarterback coach Ricky Bussell has been around in this business. In fact, He's coached the likes of Bubby Brister, who's now with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and Stan Pumphrey, who's now with the Washington Redskins. So he's seen both of those guys in their college days, and he says Fjord has the stronger arm. So that'll tell you a little bit about Will Fjord. There's no doubt he's going to be a solid quarterback by the time he leaves Virginia Tech. He's just a little green right now with an experience, and the only way you get that experience is to get in there and knock around a little bit. Mountaineers dropped Daryl Whitmore, their free safety, back at the 25-yard line. Time has expired, so this is the final play, unless we get a penalty. The long throw by Fjord is knocked down there by David Lockwood. So the first half of action from Lane Stadium is over, and the West Virginia Mountaineers, problem ridden, take a 12 to... And we welcome you back to Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia. Halftime, West Virginia has the lead, 12 to 3. Well, John Garcia, we talked at the onset that emotions would be a question for this game as far as West Virginia coming off the big victory over Pitt, and emotionally, the Mountaineers are flat. There's no doubt about it. West Virginia is making mental mistakes, lack of concentration with all the penalties and drop passes. West Virginia's defense, on the other hand, playing very well. Yeah, they have been. They have held Virginia Tech to just 45 yards on the ground. So the West Virginia defense is doing the job. And on days like this, I guess, West Virginia's defense has got to help the offense out because the offense is struggling. Unless you take a look at the first possession of the game for West Virginia, the Mountaineers march down the field, Craig Taylor scoring the touchdown on an eight-yard run. But other than that, it's been a penalty-plagued game for West Virginia, and I'm sure Don Nealon has got some words for his team down there to fire it up quick. I'm sure he'll have what you call an old-fashioned attitude adjustment. Stay tuned. The second half is coming up. West Virginia against the Virginia Tech Hokies.